In this presentation, I am going to invite you to go back a few years into the spring of 1981 and accompany Billy Meyer and Quetzal when they went on a tour at Auenberg in Switzerland. And they visited some farms and took pictures and a video of an alien craft posing in front of several trees. It is extraordinary to learn that Billy and his alien friend walked around taking pictures of a UFO without anyone noticing. This is based on research I did more than a year ago. Why not publish it until now? Well, I was hoping that someone in Switzerland could go to this place, to Auenberg, and do the same tour that Billy did on April 3rd, 1981 and confirm that at least one of the trees photographed still exists. The pandemic has prevented this from being done, so it is time to show the results of this analysis. That day, between 1.10 p.m. and 3.22 p.m. at Auenberg, Billy took at least 18 photos of the so-called wedding cake UFO, a.k.a. the WC UFO, and a video. The photos show a small craft of 3.5 meters in diameter statically hovering in front of different trees. This craft is the size of a compact car and is for a single occupant. I mean it only has one seat. Although if necessary three people can fit there uncomfortably. Quetzal controlled it with his mind. It seems that these ships have a computer on an interface made from neurons. It is an organic computer. It allows telepathic commands to be accepted by it and the ship can be operated remotely. There is no evidence that the WC UFO, which comes in two sizes, 3.5 and 7 meters, has a tripod for landing. It is possible that an external mechanism holds it up by the handles on its sides when it arrives at its hangar. This is like a puzzle to put together all the clues that are included in the photos and the videos. For this, tools like Google Earth are very helpful as they allow us to measure details in the terrain, orientation, elevation, and even get a ground level view of distant mountains as Billy observed them. Aerial photos are also available and it is possible to see old details such as trees that existed at the time Billy took the photos. It was also useful to use the Starwalk application to verify the elevation of the sun at that location on that day and at the times the photos were taken. Or we can also use a geometric relationship called the camera formula that lets us know how far the WC UFO was from the camera in each photo. And of course, the testimony of Billy Meyer. I am going to show you the Auenberg region in Google Earth. This is a view of Europe. Here is Switzerland. Different places where Billy was. And here, marked as Figu, F-I-G-U, is the living place at his home on a farm. It is close to Zurich, here. There are other places like Hassenball, where we made a study of a beam ship that is shown in our latest book, They Are Here. And one can find this place close to Hinville, where the pendulum UFO took place. Auenberg is in this place. Close to it, there is a tower on top of a high mountain. This is a mountain and Auenberg is a hill. We will see it in more detail. Here we will see the hill closer to the ground. Billy arrived in the morning. He was in this area, close to a grove of trees. This is the south and north goes up the hill here. He walked in this area. He initially parked his tractor, pulling his green trailer here, and went over this road to then park it at this area. 
We will see more details on maps and in the aerial photos. This is a picture of the area with several details at top from the top view. We find the tower close to Auenberg and the area where Billy was. Here there are several trees in a southern grove. Towards the north, the elevation goes up the hill. At the right, we see the eastern forest with tall trees. A tree fence that divides two farms. This is a close-up of a recent photo, same area, and is indicated where the trees that appear on Meyer's photos were. T1, T2, T3, and T5 were trees in front of which the ship hovered. And one additional tree that appears in the photos, T4, indicated here. All of them, with the exception of one of them, are gone. This is an aerial photo from 1984, three years after Billy took his photos. The trees are there. There are four different weather firs. T1, T2, T3, and T5. And another different tree nearby marked as T4. Billy arrives early in his small tractor, pulling his green trailer. He meets Quetzal and takes the first photo at 1.10 p.m., the one we see here. The ship flies overhead, ready to do its demonstrations. There is a second craft that Billy climbs on top of at the beginning, and from there, at treetop height, he photographs the WCUFO posing in front of the tree marked as T1. He takes several shots there. This is the area where Billy arrived, over here. We see the southern grove and the T1 tree that we see in the photos. In this view, we see the southern grove in perspective, the place where the T1 tree was and the T2 tree. It is a recent photo from Google Earth. Billy gets on the second ship, which we are not sure which one it was, and on it, he flies through the treetops. And from there, behind the trees, he takes his pictures. This is one of them. It is an extraordinarily high resolution photo showing the WCUFO. In the background, we see the somewhat cloudy sky, the tall trees of the eastern forest. The trees are about 30 to 40 meters high. They look gray as they are about 200 meters from the camera. Closer and behind the WC UFO, we can see the fur in a less gray tone with a ship in front of it. And in the foreground and blurred, we see branches of the trees in the southern grove. Imagine Billy sitting on something that flies nine meters high between branches taking pictures. In the original 74 page WC UFO investigation, I showed that the reflections in the spheres here show the forest from where Billy flies. And that this craft cannot be a scale model and is about 20 meters away from him. Here, we come to the same conclusion. Other photos from behind the treetops. This tree we see in the front was accidentally knocked down by Quetzal. It seems that he was telepathically controlling the secondary ship where Billy was flying, and when he landed it, he broke this tree that is in this shot, here on the left, very close to him. We'll talk about this later. Another shot from the treetops. We see this hill in the background. 
That allows us to confirm where Billy was and where his camera was pointing to, in this case, to the north. And another photo at treetop level. This tree is in the middle of the mist. This one is the T4 tree, which is uphill about 150 meters away from the camera. And we see it from here. It's curious, but it looks like the weather changed rapidly in the next few minutes. As in later photos, we see a sunny day. Perhaps a cloud was passing quickly by that location that day. In this map, with a photo from 1984, we see the trees T1 to T5. A blue dot represents where the WC UFO was hovering near four of them. The red lines indicate the direction Billy's camera was pointing when he took the photos. And the small dashes at the beginning of each arrow indicates where Billy was when each shot was taken. After descending from the secondary craft, Billy walks north, uphill. The WC UFO moves from T1 tree toward the T2 tree. Billy says that on that day, a somewhat crazy farmer came out in a rage, threatening him with a metal instrument. Billy had to run for his life. I don't think the farmer was upset that there was a WC UFO on his property, since he couldn't see it, but he was upset that Billy had crossed the fence onto his property. From T1 to T2, we looked at the elevations and constructed a terrain profile shown here. It has a height difference of 60 meters from the grove at the south to the top. At this point, Billy took one of his photos. Because of the terrain profile, we noticed that, that from there he could only see the top of the T4 tree, not the whole tree. Here we see one of the photos from a sequence of several photos he took as he climbed up towards the WC UFO getting closer. Billy sometimes kneels down to take his photos, perhaps for better stability. That's why we see the grass on the ground very close to him. We notice the top of the T4 tree on the right and the same hill we saw from another shot in the southern grove. Billy walks uphill in a northerly direction. Detail from the same photo. It clearly casts shadows on the tree, indicating that it is very close to it. With Google Earth, we look at ground level from this location here, and it matches what we see in the photos. The terrain and the nearby hill. On the left is a Google Earth image. Billy continues climbing and taking several photos that can be found in the Photo Inventorium book until he gets very close to the T2 tree. We see this extraordinary photo in high resolution. In the background we find the forest on the east side with tall trees. We see the shadows on the tree branches and the reflections of the sun on the spheres that confirm the orientation of this photo that day. About this photo, there is a detailed analysis in the book They Are Here, which we wrote with Chris Locke. At this point, I believe this is when Billy had to run away from this farm to save his life. I don't think this event is included in the long list of attempts on Billy's life, however. Now Billy and Quetzal are riding on the tractor, pulling the tractor up the upward sloping hill, going up here. They reach the top of the nearby hill and park here. It is from this point that Billy took a unique video of the WC UFO. 
We know he was here as it matches the direction we see from the distant mountains. There is a house nearby, but from there, nobody can see the trailer. Billy unloads the tripod of his Super 8 video camera, does the filming, and takes some pictures. I'm going to show you a portion of that video later. He takes these shots of the WC UFO that has moved into the tree marked as 3. Again, the WC UFO is hovering statically in front of a tree. Billy gets closer as he takes a few pictures. We can see the top of a tree that is next to a house that is not in the photos. This house is behind this hill. This is the photo in which he was closest to the tree. The house is behind this hill, near this tree. This is an extraordinarily high resolution photo as well. This is a close up of the same photo. For some reason, the farmer on this farm nailed a horizontal stick into the base of the trunk. And if we look at the photo in detail, we find what looks like there may be a glass leaning against the base of the tree. The trunk is irregular, unlike the other trees with straight trunks. We can see that some of the lower branches have been cut. This is a recent image from Google Earth. It shows what appears to be tree number three. This tree next to it did not exist in 1981. It would be interesting if someone could go to this site to observe and photograph this tree. It would also be interesting if in the future we could find in Google Earth the photos that Billy took at each of these sites. In Google Earth you can upload photos at each specific location. Let's watch the UFO video. This video can be found on billyforkids.info. It was filmed on April 1981, as we said, at Auenberg. We see the UFO in front of a tree and sometimes we hear Billy's voice. We downloaded this video from Figu YouTube channel. We see a distant mountain, the tree, and behind this hill here is a hidden house. Here is where Billy had just knelt down. He is taking a picture and he will stand up. We hear background sounds, distant sounds. Billy stands up and gets closer to the camera. He will do a zoom of the UFO later, after Quetzal suggested it. Quetzal is telepathically talking with him. The voice we hear is from Billy. Quetzal is on the left, and we do not see him in the video. Here is Billy going to the camera and he will do a zoom. This image is very similar to what we see in the photos with this tree with an irregular trunk and cut branches. This UFO is very stable. It appears motionless, hovering in front of the tree. It is extraordinary to see it static, completely still. Let us continue. After taking photo 848, Billy walks back to the trailer. From there, he took photos 849 and 850. The WC UFO moves from here to the next tree, T5, and now hovers in front of it. Photo 849. This tree, T5, appears to have a smaller tree close to it. Here, as we see another trunk. 
South is toward this area. And this is a natural fence with several trees separating two farms that we already showed in a top view before. Billy moves to the east and climbs over his trailer and takes the last photo in the WC UFO series. You can see the mountains on top of which is the communications tower we saw at the beginning. This confirms his location and the direction in which he took this photo. This is a close-up in an enhanced photo. We see the tree very well that perhaps is a small tree near to it. We find the tower on the mountain in the background. Here we see again the map with the location of each shot. Photos 849 and 850. Billy was in two places with his tractor and trailer here. And here. And the WC UFO was near four trees here. And this one here. And finally here. After finishing the photo session, Quetzal, using one of his beam ships, brought the tree he destroyed down to the southern grove. He transported it 500 meters and deposited it uphill near the trailer. We see one side of the tree is destroyed, which seems to indicate that the ship Billy was on landed close to it, breaking its branches on one side and knocking it down. Billy cut off a piece of the trunk at the base and took it home, along with the top of the tree. These are photos from the next day in the morning. The trunk is leaking large amounts of its resin due to the strong magnetic field that had affected it. Conclusions We find four different trees in the Meyer photos. The WC UFO was close to them, hovering. Three of these trees no longer exist today. One of them, T3, could be still there. Meyer did not use bonsai trees, as some skeptics claim. Meyer knelt down to take photos. He avoided, for any reason, showing nearby houses. It appears that he always used to do this with his photos that did not give good clues at his time in the 70s that would allow us to find where he took them. However, today, with technology such as Google Earth and aerial historic photos, we can find where he was, and we have done this here. Meyer and Quetzal were surrounded by a few houses and potential witnesses. It looks like they did not see the WCUFO. We do not find news about it. This UFO must be used in a cloaking device as we have already found in another WCUFO night photo. And Quetzal? Was he visible? Looking like a normal person as Billy? Or perhaps he used a device to hide himself, like the devices they have in their belts. We do not know. You may find more details and information about this investigation on my website, franciscovelate.com, in a section of nonfiction and UFO investigations. Thank you very much. <laughs>